Welcome to the final battle of week number five of the FNF Victory Road Draft League. This battle will be pitting Butcher Blissies, which is Fingered Witch, as Noir on Pokemon Showdown, versus Bayside Divers, which is Sir Roland, both in the server and on Showdown. The Mega Pokemon we'll be seeing today are Mega Altaria and Mega Tyranitar, respectively, both going to be appearing. And the Z Pokemon are Z Attack Moves Arcanine, Z Any Move Blissey on Butcher Blissies, and Z Attack Moves, I believe... Luxray? No, sorry. Z Attack is Gardevoir. Z Any is Star Raptor. So any of those four Pokemon can unleash a powerful Z move in this match today. We have just fun little fact. We have all the the Pokemon on on Butcher Blissey's are all male except Blissey and the two neutral Pokemon. And then on the other team, Luxray is male and the rest are female. So. It, it always happens like that for some reason. Like, one team has, like, all-female Pokemon and the other has all-male Pokemon. Pretty funny how that works out. Um, so this will be an interesting fight. I think the Pokemon that is going to shine on Butcher Blissies for sure could be potentially Mega Altaria. Strong fairy moves hitting a lot of the Pokemon on the other side hard and resisting a lot of the moves as well. Only really being threatened by fairy and ice. So that's definitely a Pokemon that Sir Roland's going to have to be careful of. And then on Sir Roland's team, I think that Tyranitar could actually put in some pretty good work, being able to damage most of the Pokemon on Butcher Blissies. And then Latias could also be a Pokemon to look out for, although Mega Altaria is pretty good at handling Latias. Frostlass, last time used Destiny Bond really effectively, so I think that'll also be a Pokemon to look at. Um, both both battlers have uh, a, a more straightforward style of battling. I think that rather than going for toxic stall and things like that, they like to go all in. Um, Butcher Blissey is known for some of the more unpredictable sets, which will be fun to see what they decide to bring today. And Sir Roland actually went a little unpredictable last time too, so this will be an exciting match and a good last one of Week 5. So without any further ado, we could begin. Wondering who we'll see as the lead. Maybe Frostlass? Maybe... Maybe Jirachi? I'm thinking. Frostlass was Sir Roland's lead last time. And of course I'm also looking at... <laughs> Zerkatry and how it just looks so tiny in this screen. I don't know why. It's supposed to be super tall. Okay. In comes Dissy Track the Blissey and Frostlass. The Frostlass. <laughs> Joey known for using offensive Blissey. We might see a strong fire blast right off the gate. Oh, and no, Arcanine is the one to come in instead. Frostlass goes for a Destiny Bond. It is protected by that Destiny Bond threat, so Arcanine's not going to want to use a strong move like Flare Blitz yet, lest it be taken down. Kiyotaka, the Arcanine. A uh, reference to Kiyotaka from Danganronpa, Trigger Happy Havoc, the first game. And in comes Tyranitar, setting up a Sandstream. Taka goes for the Flamethrower, was going to be gutsy and try to take down that Frostlass anyways. Even with the Destiny Bond up. Tyranitar, actually a very threatening Pokemon. Close combat might be enough to take down Tyranitar in one shot from Arcanine. But is the Arcanine carrying close combat? That's the million dollar question right now. And Arcanine switches out to Blissey, taking a Earthquake, an Earthquake, uh, deal, deals critical hit damage. One more Earthquake might be enough to take it down. I'm Actually, I don't think one more Earthquake will be enough to take it down. Because that was a critical hit. Or actually, no. One more Earthquake will be enough to take it down, because it'll do probably around 45%, give or take. But 
this Blissey can be unpredictable. Who knows what Blissey's holding, uh, sorry, not holding, what Blissey has in store in its moveset. We could very well see Focus Blast. Tyranitar has Flamethrower getting a burn on Blissey. Blissey goes for the Ice Beam. And the burn combined with the Sandstorm is almost enough to take down Blissey. Tyranitar goes for Rock Polish. Really interesting. Blissey goes for a Soft Boil, bringing its HP back up. So this Tyranitar will pretty much outspeed everything on the team. But will it be able to take down Blissey, who's pretty sturdy, using Soft Oil to recover? Earthquake's gonna get it down to 6%, but Blissey goes down to its burn. I'm really curious as to what item the Blissey must have been holding, because usually Blissey runs leftovers, and I didn't see any Life Orb recoil there, so maybe an Expert Belt or something... Lum no, not Lumber. Well, regardless, Al Astro Nimba, the Altaria comes out. Maybe a combination of astronaut or uh, astro uh, not astrology, astronomy, probably, considering it's Joey. <laughs> uh, astronomy and Nimbus. A fairy move could deal some pretty big damage to Tyranitar, but an Ice Punch is going to deal pretty big damage first. Earthquake takes down Tyranitar, 5-5 five, five score on each side, Astro Nimba a little bit lower, but uh, Mega Altaria is pretty bulky and it does have the ability to use Roost. I'm not sure if uh, Joey is packing Roost on Altaria, but it is pretty common, so Sir Roland would have to use a pretty strong move to take it down. And in comes Gardevoir, who definitely can use a strong move. Strong Moon Blast would probably be enough. But in comes Jirachi, taking that Moon Blast, not really breaking a sweat from it. Jira Daya, the Jirachi. Jirachi is actually going to be pretty tough for Sir Roland's team to handle. Flash Cannon hits Luxray. I thought the burn came from the Flash Cannon for a second. I was like, wait a second, that, that move isn't supposed to burn. <laughs> but no, it comes from the Flame Orb. So Luxray probably has guts. So now it could deal some pretty big damage when it hits. Both in their 70s, in terms of HP, not age. I don't, I don't think they're senior citizens, but maybe they are. Who knows? I mean, Jirachi is known for taking like century-long naps, awakening at the every time the comet comes. I forgot the exact name of the comet. <laughs> it looks like Quasimodo and, and Joey both got confused when they saw the burn, thinking it came from the flash cannon. <laughs> we were all like, what? <laughs> so Psychic deals some big damage, but Luxray is able to take down Jirachi with a strong crunch. But with special defense and attack both down one stage, it's going to go down from Kiyotaka, the Arcanine. 4-4 four, four score, pretty even. Arcanine is definitely going to be a Pokemon to watch out for. Can hit very hard. In comes Latias. Ooh, 
This is a very exciting match. Some big hits going on both sides. Both sides playing pretty well. I think in terms of HP, Sir Roland has a slight advantage, but uh, Mega Altaria is still alive on Butcher Blissies with around half HP, and that can be really strong uh, Pokemon to take down. Dragon Pulse does about 56%. That's actually a lot of damage. I'm wondering if the Latias is maybe holding Soldu? Or a Choice Scarf, perhaps? A good switch in right now could maybe be Mega Altaria taking advantage of its fairy typing. Ooh, and Kiyotaka goes down to a Dragon Pulse, but in comes Altaria. Probably going to take advantage of that fairy typing. Yep, immunity to Dragon Pulse, and Body Slam takes down the Latias. 3-3 three, three score. In comes Frostlass. Strong Ice move might be enough to take down Astro Nimba. Really intense match so far. 3-3, three, three, pretty even on both sides. Ooh, Ice Fang misses. That is going to be pretty unlucky for Frostlass, but Earthquake does about half to Frostlass, who recovers a little bit with the leftovers. Ice Fang doesn't have perfect accuracy. And an Ice Fang hits dealing some more damage. Earthquake is able to take down Frostlass. Now 3-2, slight edge for Butcher Blissies. Staraptor comes out, bird meets bird. I think Staraptor will probably be the faster one in this scenario. And close combat brings down Astro Nimba. 2-2. Two, two. This is really anyone's game. Staraptor is vulnerable from the defense drops of close combat. Zerkatry comes out, lumbar surgery. The big question will be, can Staraptor one-hit KO Zerkatry? Because if not, it's pretty much guaranteed that Staraptor is going to go down to an electric-type attack. Unless maybe it's holding a um, focus sash or something like that. Strong double edge might be enough to do it, but we'll see. Ooh, a Z move comes out. Supersonic Sky Strike dealing about 56%, popping that balloon, but this Thunderbolt takes down Lumbar Surgery, the Zerkatry, who gets that Beast Boost special attack bonus. It's all up to Gardevoir now. I think a Moonblast might be enough to take down Zerkatry. It is pretty frail. Oh, and it goes first, actually. Thunderbolt bringing down Gardevoir to almost nothing, and the Paralysis is going to cause Gardevoir not to move this turn. So that's it. I think that's it for Gardevoir, unless it has some sort of priority. And the final Thunderbolt takes down Gardevoir, and it's a 2-0 victory for Butcher Blissies. Well fought from both sides, really close match. Um, some, some unlucky moments for Sir Roland, that Ice Fang missing. If two Ice Fangs could have hit from Frostlass, it could have gone a little differently, I think. And the paralysis on Gardevoir. That was 
that was really close. Really close. Um, so that was the final battle of week five between Butcher Blissies and Bayside Divers. Good match from both. This is Noel from Mystical Chain. And tune in for the weekly recap of week five coming pretty soon after this video is uploaded. And we'll be moving into week six. See you then.